true what they say. You can take the girl out of the sport, but you can't take the sport out of the girl. And our next guest might just know a thing or two about that. Anu Vidyanathan. Um, I'm going to let her say it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's a triathlete turned comedian she and has, has story. quite the story of mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries to follow her dreams. With the help of arms to cut through water, legs to run, and muscles to power the seat of her bike, she made a name for herself on the racing course, and now she's taken the mic in her one-woman stand-up comedy show, BCAD, before children, after diapers. <laughs> Brilliant. But unlike a plane, uh, in a parent's life, four hours can be excruciatingly long. It's almost a lifetime. Because if that email had arrived at 6 p.m. the night before, rather than 10 p.m., my husband and I could have sat across the dinner table, had a civil conversation, organized someone or something called a babysitter, a human being, or a television, uh, and, you know, done something to prolong our marriage, for example, through various lockdowns. Coronavirus has taught me a lot about being a good parent. Okay. <laughs> anu Vaidanyan. Not in Athen. Vaidanyan? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad she's a comedian. <laughs> I know. Uh, I was just saying, my actual government last name trips up a lot of people too, so that's why I've shortened it. But anu. without further ado, here she is. And she has a little, a little helper for yes. the pronunciation. Please correctly pronounce your last name. Uh, why do you not then? <laughs> why do you not then? There you go. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. Your, your story attention. is intriguing, inspiring, entertaining all at the same time. You grew up in India. You started off your career as an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk to us about that, please. I was a very nerdy and serious child. You, know, <laughs> uh, you couldn't uh, pull me out of physics class with a forklift. You know, I was very, very serious. Uh, and I picked engineering because Bangalore, the city where mm -hmm. I grew up, uh, was also, you know, sort of uh, awakening to this technology boom, you know. Yeah. And everybody wanted to sort of ride it. And uh, my parents were the kind of people that said, you know, we'd love you regardless. Uh, but, oh. you know, yeah, but home science was not for me. So I was like, no, I'm going to stick a fork in a toaster instead and see oh what God. happens. <laughs> and see what happens. It's just so funny to me because I feel like engineering and comedy are the absolute polar opposites yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. I love it. You've just been there and back. Yeah, that's right. In your whole career. And you were the first Asian woman to complete yeah. an Ultraman. Right. Which, okay, Ultraman Canada, which, but I'll just sidebar, I have no yeah. idea what that is. Yeah. Uh, so you did an Ultraman, which yes. you're going to explain what that is, and an Iron Man. Yeah. What? How? <laughs> First of all, what's what an, is Ultraman? an Ultraman? An Ultraman is a three-day stage race. You know, you have a 10-kilometer swim. You bike around 420, but they split it up, and three you days. run 84 kilometers on the last day. Dios double mio. marathon. Yeah. All right. So after you decided, I, I'd rather stick a fork in the toaster then be serious about this. How do you make the transition about engineering? How do you make the transition to triathlons? Because I have done a few. Yeah. And you do, I remember I mulled over it for a year yeah. before I even got in the pool. What was what was your story like? So I was a very chubby kid, you know. I had a sort of this uh, pressure cooker of a college, you know. We had five women in a graduating class of 150, so you had to run, you know, otherwise you'd lose your mind and and in running, you know, I figured that you have other parts to your anatomy, like a full rib cage, you have two <laughs> full collarbones yeah, right. and sure. cheekbones, right. you know. Right. <laughs> so I was very excited to make these discoveries, and I kept going until I, you know, did a few triathlons. And I think um, it was also my cultivation of a, you know, great love for the outdoors, which in yeah. our country is very, it's very uh, lopsided, you know. And also women's safety is not really the greatest thing. So sure. I felt that it gave me a way to just be by myself, even mm. if it were at four in the morning yeah. uh, or, mm. you know, being in stadiums with no toilets for women sure. or whatever the case oh was. Gosh. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was an adventure. It's a, it's a thing. Yeah, worth uh, pursuing. What was, what's your favorite event, the running, the biking or the swimming? I think running is a poor man's sport, you know, <laughs> because you don't need access, you know. Right. You need so shoes. You, as long yeah. as you yeah. have two feet, you yeah. can do it. Exactly. You don't even need shoes, actually. Yeah. You actually I was going to say, I've seen yeah. some people do it without. So yeah. have I. And the swimming, you got to stay alive. Yeah. So it turns out you got to know how to swim. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <laughs> you got to know how to swim. Sure. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and I know the bike's not cheap because my sister's had many no, of them in her no, triathlon yeah. experience as well. Uh, but now you're a comedian. Yes. Your, I your think you were always a comedian. Life. It yes. was just, it needed, you needed a vessel. Now you were doing it on the public stage in, right. a, in a bigger form. So how did we get here? How did you decide that this was going to be a career, if you will? So the, the first shift was actually writing a book when I got pregnant mm -hmm. for the first time, you know, just uh, talking about my life in triathlon that went to a film market. 
and I, I decided I'm not going to let Bollywood tell my story, oh my you gosh. know. Uh, so I, I thought, you know, if I can do this better. So I uh, became a filmmaker, but we were shut down, you know, with the two years of the pandemic, mm. uh, couldn't get out, couldn't yeah. make a film. And I was obsessed with Blake Edwards, you know. He, uh, he made um, lots of wonderful movies, including The Pink Panther. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he cites, you know, Leo McCary as one of his early mentors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was obsessed with duck soup, right? And I was investigating the physics of a gag. And I went to clown school, um, met this uh, old Indian master clown, uh, you know, who... <laughs> He's an Indian, he's a Frenchman, but he's an old Indian master because he broke my back pretty much. You know, he was like, you're the weakest link and I'm going to take <gasps> care of that. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, so I, but he, he was a good person. He just made me very acutely aware that, you know, sitting with my life was not good enough to tell the stories I wanted to tell, with, you know, which are out in the world, really. Yeah. So I think stand-up was something of a reaction to that realization that, you know, this is not going to cut it. And uh, I was just there to be a better director, but I ended up becoming a stand-up comedian. So that's back the this, transition. Back this up one second. So you're yeah. at clown school with a master clown, Indian clowns fella instructor. <laughs> and he said, what wasn't going to cut it? Just telling your story yeah or turning your story into a film? So Philippe Collier is a, is a contemporary of uh, Peter, uh, Peter Brook, okay. a great stage director. Sure, yeah. right? uh, and I wanted to be there, you know, sort of learn everything by osmosis, right? I thought I'm just gonna take notes in the corner, uh -huh. you know, uh, learn how to sort of uh, uh, enable my actors, you know, with the physical comedy bits. But he made me aware that I'm in a room with professional performers, you know, mm. it's not gonna cut it to just sit and take notes. Yeah. You know? so, so you so, needed to actually experience yeah. what they were experiencing yes. to yes. understand it. And that is how we get through comedy. Yes. And, and you uh, being on stage. Yes. Um, he's not a lover of stand-up, you know, okay. he's more into physical clowning, but I felt like that was the real anvil to discovering whether this was something I would ever do, and I did. And yeah. it was fun, so, yeah. So what, you had your first... I, I, I can't even believe we're saying this, gig, but yeah. this is now our second person that we've had sitting on this couch show was at Clown School. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And one of them is nominated that, for a Tony A Tony now. Award. <laughs> okay, so talk to us about the concept for your show, yeah. B.C.A.D. Which is brilliant. children <laughs> after diapers. <laughs> brilliant. So, so you hysterical. know, I think a woman goes through a very long tunnel, you know, from before having children to after changing a mountain of diapers, yeah. right? And I think... Um, I just wanted to speak to that tunnel because if nothing else, it creates a flow path lighting plan, you know, yeah. for my kids to ah. follow, you know, <laughs> don't do this, do that, don't do that, don't <laughs> that's do that. Right. So, you know, it's, and it's also free therapy because as a woman director, you can't be direct, you know, that's your sort of note to self. And uh, comedy is a halfway house to deal with uh, whatever it is I have to deal with when mm. trying to make art in this mm -hmm. world, right? Where you're stood in pretty much a pit of people who are very ambitious, who are there for a reason, but it's your sort of job as a self-produced maker to mm -hmm. you know, yeah. only be a dream catcher and that can be very very difficult sure and, and and I think comedy gave me that halfway house but I think it was basically having kids that uh, made me realize that you know they're very quick and they don't care about quadratic they keep you honest yeah, yeah, they, they keep you honest total we'll tell fodder you. for jokes I'm total. Sure. good yeah. fodder for jokes and we we love guests on our show who say you know there was there was nothing out no one was hiring me yeah. there was no one on X Y or Z that looked like me so I decided to do it myself yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the moment where you realized, I'm the first Indian woman to do this? I, I what was what, when? When was that epiphany for you? So I think um, I'm someone who's sort of deaf in both ears to praise or critic, you know, criticism. Oh, and smart. I feel yeah, and I feel that uh, for me, there's no. I mean, the, the choices are you either do it or you don't, mm -hmm. right? And I felt okay. that with stand up, uh, because it it made me feel so fulfilled as an artist. You you know, books and films. They take years to yeah. you know find any validation yeah. if that's what you're looking for, and I am. Everybody is, and so mm. uh, when I f figured that this feedback loop is so quick, obviously I'm a very selfish person. So I, I said, <laughs> no, that's it. I'm doing it. <laughs> and then, uh, here Gosh. I am. Yeah. And here you are. <laughs> a just a fascinating story. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And BCAD before Children After Diapers is making its off-Broadway run June second. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Through the fourth, you can grab your tickets at Soho Playhouse. Yeah.